Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Lightspeed stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Lightspeed is a point of sale and e-commerce software provider based in Montreal. It was founded in 2005. It has offices in Montreal, New York, Olympia, Ottawa, Santa Cruz, Belgium, and Amsterdam. It offers its services to over 100,000 retail, restaurant, and hospitality businesses across 100 countries. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, market cap $7.1 billion. They're trading at $60 a share and they have 117 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you forecast the free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flows, cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. You can see the company has negative free cash flow each year because they're growing their business and investing back into their company. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, and that's also negative each year. Their revenue looks really good. It nearly triples from 2017 to 2020. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, and you can see the revenue looks great growing each year. Below that is cost of revenue, and the difference is the gross profit. And their gross profit is also improving quite a bit each year. But since they're a young and growing company, they're investing a lot into their business to grow it. So their operating expenses are higher than their gross profit. So they have negative operating income each year. They also have interest on their debt and other income and expenses. So the company has negative net income every single year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow, and that's negative each year. Then capital expenditures. So if you take operating cash flow minus CapEx, that gives you your free cash flow, and that's negative each year. Since the company is not generating any cash, it needs money from somewhere to run its business. So it issued 20 million of capital stock in 2018, 207 million in 2019, and 130 million in 2020. It also issued 30 million dollars of debt in 2020. Let's dig into their operating cash flow. And the way you calculate operating cash flow, it's net income, which was negative 53 million. Then you have to add back the non-cash items from the income statement. They had 13 million of depreciation, 9 million of stock-based compensation. This is when you pay employees with company stock to subsidize that salary. This is a non-cash item, so this gets added back on the statement of cash flows. And the company reported a $3.2 million gain on taxes on the income statement. So we have to reverse that out on a statement of cash flows. So the company lost $29 million of cash through its operational business in 2020. And that seems to be the worst year of the four. But as sales increase, they'll be able to cover their fixed costs and become more efficient and hopefully turn a profit. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $344 million of equity, $47 million of debt, but negative 164 million of net debt. So they could pay off all their debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have 164 million dollars of cash left over. Their WAC is 12.2 percent which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for the 7.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $4.6 billion. We divide that by 117 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $40. They're trading at $60, so they're trading at a 53% premium. It's a sell according to the model. So the stock has done really well since it IPO'd in September. So it appears investors are bullish on this company. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd in September, you'd have $19,000 today. This stock has been performing really well since it IPO'd up 92%, much better than the S&P. And the 52 week low was $28, the high was $63. And the stock is trading well above its 50 day moving average and 200 day moving average. And the stock's trading volume is pretty low. Less than half a million shares a day are traded. And of the 117 million shares outstanding, 91 million are on float. And institutions seem to be bullish on this stock. 61% of the shares are held by institutions. And it has a pretty low short percentage. Only 2.5% of the shares are shorted. 
The company received a $30 million cash injection by Excel Partners in 2012, and the company saw a 120% growth in transactions that year. It acquired Merchant OS, a point-of-sale software developer, and Lightspeed Retail. And all of Lightspeed's customers processed $7.5 billion in 2013. And the company received a $35 million investment by Inovia Capital. In 2014, the company started to get restaurant and hospitality businesses to be customers. At the time, it had 21,000 customers that transacted $6 billion to $8.2 billion a year. In 2015, it increased to 23,000 businesses in more than 30 countries. Also in 2015, the company closed a $61 million Series C round. Also in 2015, Lightspeed acquired an Amsterdam-based software developer. In 2017, the company raised $200 million Canadian dollars. In 2018, the company hired a former CFO from Google. In 2019, the company went public on the Toronto Stock Exchange. In 2020, the company started trading in the United States and acquired GastroFix. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. for the market is 12.3. The median is 14.8. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. They have a negative P.E. because they have negative net income. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 58.9, much worse than the median average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 20.6, also much worse than the median and average. And the way you calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Their equity is $344 million. That's assets minus liabilities. But their tangible equity is $135 million. And they have a good amount of intangible assets on their balance sheet as a result of the many acquisitions. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can easily cover their current liabilities with their current assets. And they have $210 million of cash on their balance sheet, so they have a lot of cash to work with. The company seems to be well capitalized. Even though they had negative free cash flow, they have $162 million of working capital. So they should be able to continue growing even if they have negative cash flow for the next few years. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 21 companies in the same industry as Lightspeed. And if Lightspeed has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're much worse in PE. They have a really high price to sales ratio. They are doing a little better in price to book. They have a high current ratio, so that's good. They have a lot of cash in their balance sheet. They have negative ROE because they still haven't turned a profit. They're pretty low in debt relative to the average. And they're a really small company, only $7 billion market cap. And they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, I think this company has a great future, but the stock price seems a little high at this point. It's probably going to go higher because investors get excited with these new stocks. But if they continue growing at this pace and acquiring other businesses, I think they'll do really well. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.